About a good population of the human race have been known to casually step into the ocean, whether for a swim, surf, or dive. But it gets creepy when they start to realize that as cute as baby dolphins are, there are more than a dozen scary sea creatures that would love to have them as appetizers. But what's even creepier is the fact that research has only been able to cover 5% of the ocean. So there's 5% of the terrifying sea creatures known to us, but knowing that means we have 95% more creatures lurking in the depths of the ocean that we know absolutely nothing about. From tongue-eating Laos to the evolution of the ancient Greek mythology, here are 20 terrifying sea creatures that actually exist. Number 20. Lancet Fish the lancet fish look like they swam out of prehistoric times, with their gaping, fanged jaws, enormous eyes, a snail-like fin, and long, slithery body. They even have a dinosaur-worthy scientific genus named as Alepisaurus, which means scaleless lizard. We need no soothsayer to tell us that lancet fish are scaleless fish. They usually grow up to more than 7 feet long and are one of the largest deep-sea fish. Lancet fish live mainly in tropical and subtropical waters, but they migrate as far north as subarctic areas like Alaska's Bering Sea to feed. Since 1982, studies have shown that there are two in the Gulf of Alaska, four near the Aleutian Islands, and ten in the eastern Bering Sea. Anyone who comes across this type of fish would probably make it for an alien, but there are a lot of fun facts about this that you might find interesting. One of which includes the fact that lancet fish are hermaphrodites, which means that they possess both male and female organs simultaneously. Another fun fact is that the lancet fish flesh is watery and gelatinous and generally not appetizing to humans, in case you were wondering how it tastes. However, other large predators like sharks, tuna, and fur seals, and maybe even other lancet fish don't mind. And and that ultimately takes us to the final fact about this alien-like scales lizard. They're cannibals. In fact, their favorite meal is actually lancet fish. Who would have thought that? Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. This takes us to this video's strange topic. A subscriber by the name of Joel Harrison, who claims to be a diver, had recently submitted a post where he had said he wanted to share his stunning story, stating that he had discovered the legendary Cthulhu during one of his dives in the Atlantic Ocean. His descriptions were somewhat similar to the Cthulhu everyone is familiar with, which was created by writer H.P. Lovecraft. Now, this begins to place doubts in our minds that this mysterious creature could possibly be in existence, or it could be just another hoax from attention-seeking users on the internet. Real or fake? Let us know what you think with the hashtag strange topic in the comment section. Number 19. Payara As cute as the name sounds, the payara is by far one of the craziest fishes that you'll find in South America. Not only does it have a mysterious reputation due to a lack of research on the species, but it also has an unforgettable appearance that includes two gigantic fangs. This fish goes by the nickname saber-toothed tigerfish, vampirefish, and water wolf, but I basically prefer the term vampirefish because it's way cooler. The vampirefish is known to eat piranhas for breakfast and has made its home in the Amazon basin of South America. It likes clear, fast-moving water with lots of currents, and you'll often find them in churning rivers at the bottom of waterfalls. And for its features, let's start with the teeth, which is probably the first thing you noticed since I started talking. These fangs can extend a whopping 4 to 6 inches, and they're so big that payaras are born with holes in their upper jaws that can house them. In addition to that, they have sharp, spiky daggers that line their gums. Number 18. Tongue-Eating Louse as the name implies, the tongue-eating louse are nightmares to many animals. It is known as a parasite that wants to get into an animal's mouth, attack, and then replace its tongue, which is an oddly specific job of the parasite, and it's obvious where it's got its name. Luckily for humans, the tongue-eating isopod doesn't affect people, but the Atlantic croaker and other fish aren't as lucky.
as a Facebook posting by the Galveston Island State Park in Texas shows how dangerous this parasite is to them. Several users who commented on the post had said that for years now, they've seen the tongue-eating louse on fish in nearby Gulf of Mexico waters. And along with croaker, the parasite is commonly found in the mouths of sea trout and several snapper species. These isopods are also related to the pill bugs, aka roly polies, which you can find in your yard. Men Hayden fish are also so often seen with their tongue replaced by the isopod that they're known as bug moths. And they're so common in snapper that that version of the louse has a second name known as the snapper choking isopod. Number 17. Giant Isopod Speak of the devil, the pill bug, which was earlier mentioned as that roly-poly backyard bug, has a colossal cousin that lives in the ocean's darkest depths. This so-called cousin is known as the giant isopod, which roams the deep sea floor, feasting on fish carcasses and other debris that fall from above. From a list of thousands of species of isopods, this giant isopod happens to be the largest, thus its name. But they are also among the most mysterious, which means that not much is known about the species. But from what is known so far, they're not as fierce as they look. They are scavengers and would eat any of the falling marine snow and what's enveloped within it. So things like crab flesh and marine worms. However, it was discovered in 1879 that scientists have yet to do extensive studies on this animal's biology and behavior. But more in-depth research will help us better understand this fascinating sea creature. You would have to put down expensive submersibles and observe them over a long period of time. Collections of them are also relatively small. They certainly are a nice curiosity, yet there aren't many people formulating research around them, so there are still a lot of unanswered questions. Number 16. Sarcastic Fringe Head the seafloor of the Northwest Pacific Ocean houses a very angry fish with a bizarre name and a parachute on its face, which it uses as a weapon. Named for having such a huge mouth and aggressive temperament, the sarcastic fringe head is a fascinating small saltwater fish. The sarcastic, in its name, is thought to derive from the Greek word sarcazine, which means to tear flesh, referring to their aggressive behavior. Female sarcastic fringe heads, like all two blennies, lay their eggs in a male's shelter, and the males protect them from potential predators and other threats until they hatch. This selection by females drives a system of intense male competition and territoriality. Male sarcastic fringe heads display to each other by opening their very large mouths in the direction of their rivals. The mouth's intimidating coloration combined with the extreme nature of its size, which may be as, as four times as its close size, allows the large male to establish dominance over the smaller. Oftentimes, the rival's mouths are thrust very near to each other, sometimes touching. The smaller individual typically surrenders and leaves the area without the pair actually engaging in a battle. Number 15. Northern Stargazer no, it's not what you're thinking. They don't stargaze, but for a fact, part of the stargazer's scientific name, Astrocopus, means one who aims at the stars, and Gutatus means speckled. The northern stargazer is a very strange-looking fish with a speckled, flattened body and a large head. It lives at the bottom of the lower Chesapeake Bay in deep ocean waters. The northern stargazer has a blackish-brown body with white spots that gradually get bigger from its head to its tail. Its flattened body can grow up to a length of 22 inches, but it averages 8 to 18 inches in length. Its mouth and eyes are located on the top of its large head, facing upwards and finally it has three dark horizontal lines on its tail. Northern stargazers are known to eat small fish, crabs, and other crustaceans. They hunt by burying themselves in the sand with their eyes and mouth sticking out just enough to look for an incoming prey. And once something tasty swims by, the stargazer uses its large mouth to create a vacuum to suck its prey in. Northern stargazers also possess an organ on their heads that can deliver an electric charge that stuns and confuses prey and helps ward off predators. Number 14. Viperfish the viperfish lurks in the deepest, darkest parts of the sea. It was named for its fang-like teeth, and this fierce predator has, with time, developed a specialized hunting technique that's perfect for mile-deep ocean floors where there is no light. It can basically generate its own light and use it to attract prey. The viperfish's jaws are wider than its body and can open to an accurate 90-degree angle to enable it to grab prey as big as itself. The long, needle-like lower teeth are used to spear prey, while the smaller teeth inside the throat then take hold and deliver the victim to the stomach whole. 
and although it may appear to be covered in scales, viperfishes do not possess any scales. Rather, they have this thick, transparent coating of an unknown substance. They are found in meso and bathypelagic habitats, which are difficult for people to directly see. Viperfish travel vertically throughout the day, moving up into the more fruitful areas at night to eat. Due to their sluggish metabolism, or the fact that they probably do not need to eat every night, it's possible that they only a portion of the whole viperfish population engages in a deal vertical migration on any one night. Number 13. Anglerfish the deep sea anglerfish is another one of the craziest looking fish you can find in the sea. Scientifically identified as Melanocetes johnsoni, this fish is recognized as one of the best known creatures of the deep. When a nearly spherical fish washed up on Greenland shores in the early 19th century, the first deep sea anglerfish were discovered. In his laboratory in Copenhagen, zoologist Johannes Christopher Reinhardt dissected this strange fish that he named the football fish. Over time, certain sailors would sometimes discover other similar animals and snared in their nets, which is a sight that defies even the most fantastical fishermen's tales. Fortunately, cameras had been deployed, and the fabled anglerfish was ready to surface and capture our imagination. But marine professionals were eager to learn more, while general public's features were distorted and discussed. It's just one of the many species of about 200 scatters across the world's ocean. But out of that 200, there are just about a dozen species that inhabit the deepest parts of the ocean. What earned this fish its name is pretty obvious, but if you still can't tell, it's from the elongated dorsal spine that supports a light-producing organ known as a photophore, through a chemical process known as bioluminescence. This photophore can produce a blue-green light similar to that of a firefly on land. The anglerfish uses its appendage as an advantage during hunting by waving it back and forth to try and attract its victim. It just lies still, waiting for any unfortunate prey to wander close enough, then gulps it down with lightning speed. Number 12. Fangtooth the fangtooth looks just like something that swam out of a horror movie, but this creature holds a lot of curiosities and is among the huge list of crazy looking deep sea creatures, obviously. Scientifically identified as the Anoplogaster carnuta, this menacing creature is known to haunt the deep waters of many of the world's oceans. As the name implies, the fangtooth has a rather impressive looking set of teeth which is actually the largest teeth of any fish in the ocean when taken in proportion to body size. And because of its unusually grotesque appearance, the fangtooth has gotten the nicknames ogrefish and sometimes sabertooth. Looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking at me? The fangtooth is an opportunistic hunter when it comes to food. It employs specific chemical detectors to smell the surrounding water for prey. Those protruding fangs act as a trap, allowing the fangtooth to snag fish that are larger than itself when an unfortunate animal swims within gulping distance. Fortunately, special sockets on the roof of its mouth prevent it from skewering its own brain with its sword-like teeth. Only two species of the fish are now recognized. The shorthorn fangtooth, which is roughly half as big and inhabits tropical regions from the western Pacific to the western Atlantic and may grow up to 16 centimeters in length, and temperate waters, and the common fang tooth. Number 11. Vampire Squid the vampire squid has, throughout the years, been misclassified. When it was initially discovered in 1903, it was classified as a type of cirrid octopus, like the flapjack octopus, since it has webbing between its arms and a pair of fins on its mantle. However, the 1940s and 1950s saw it differently, as scientists determined that it was neither an octopus nor squid, but part of a different group based on its unique features. Is this big eye? Okay, I took about... Recent studies have clarified that this creature actually sits alone on the phylum mollusca as the only living member of the family, Vampyrotuthidae. One of the vampire squid's most notable characteristics is its large eyes. In fact, it has proportional to body size, the biggest eyes of any living animal. And if you watch a video of vampire squid, sometimes you might see its eyes glow bright blue. But in reality, they're not actually blue. Rather, the vampire squid's eyes are clear, but when illuminated by the ROV's lights, they reflect the surrounding water and tend to appear blue. However, unlike other cephalopods like octopuses and squids that have special muscles that control their pigment sacs, called chromatophores, which allows them to change their color, the vampire squid lacks these muscles, so don't expect to see a vampire squid shift colors. It's cool enough as it seems. Number 10. Goblin Shark Goblin sharks are a species of fish that can be found living at the bottom of the ocean along continental shelves or continent's edges. These pink animals have been known to grow up to 12 feet long and weigh up to 460 pounds. They also have narrow snouts and fang-like teeth. 
Spotted mostly off the coast of Japan, they got their name due to their likeness to magical goblins that appear in Japanese folklore. Scientists know very little about the behavior of these infrequently encountered creatures. However, they think that, like many other shark species, goblin sharks live alone. Additionally, they believe that morning and evening are the fish's busiest times. These animals are probably slow-moving beings, which might make hunting for food challenges. Fortunately for the slowpokes, they have additional bite thanks to their unique extended jaws. The top and bottom teeth of a goblin shark are joined by ligaments or bands of skin tissue that are tucked within its mouth. The shark stretches the elastic tissue from its mouth to snag prey that is just out of reach. This enables the creature to munch on food like teleost fish and squid. It also makes the shark one jaw dropping fish. Number 9. Chimera this bizarre fish, known as a chimera, has a network of lines covering its surface. The lines frequently resemble seams. They give the idea that the animal's body was assembled from pieces of many different animals. The look is similar to the chimera, an animal from Greek mythology with a body made of pieces of several animals fused together. Having a snout in front of its eyes and a huge head, chimeras have enormous eyes. The nose resembles the beak of a duck, and because of their long, rat-like tails and teeth that resemble rat incisors, certain chimeras are known as ratfish. Others are referred to as rabbitfish because early naturalists thought their faces resembled those of rabbit because the tip of some species snouts has a curled extension that resembles a little elephant's trunk, these fish are also known as elephant fish. There are over 50 species of chimera fish living in the ocean today, and they are known to use special electroreceptors on their snouts to help them sense prey. The chimeras are actually part of the subclass, holocephali. Also, several species have venomous dorsal spines that protect them from humans and predators, and these creatures have completely scaleless skin. Number eight. Lamprey. The sea lamprey is an ancient Atlantic fish that once wreaked havoc on the Great Lakes, and it might just be America's first destructive invasive species. Among the most primitive of all vertebrate species, the sea lamprey is a parasitic fish native to the northern and western Atlantic oceans. Due to their similar body shapes, lampreys are sometimes inaccurately called lamprey eels. Unlike other bony fishes like trout, cod, and herring, lampreys lack scales, fins, and gill covers. But their skeletons are made of cartilage just like sharks. They breathe through a distinctive row of seven pairs of tiny gill openings located behind their mouths and eyes. The sea lamprey's disc-shaped suction cup mouth, which it uses to grip onto helpless fish, is ringed with sharp, horny teeth. This anatomical feature makes the sea lamprey an effective killer of lake trout and other bony fishes. The lamprey then rasps away the flesh of the fish with its rough tongue so it may consume the host's blood and other fluids. Each year, one lamprey consumes at least 40 pounds of fish. However, there are new techniques under development for the control of sea lampreys. Since sea lampreys use odors and pheromones to communicate, scientists made good efforts to replicate those odors to increase the efficacy of current control methods. Number 7. Frilled Shark the frilled sharks are known as active predators that may, most times, lunge at potential prey, swallowing it whole regardless of its size. Their normal swimming style is somewhat similar to that of eels as they appear to swim in a serpentine fashion. Their preferred prey, however, is squid, and they have several rows of long teeth, each with three long points, that are perfect for grabbing the soft bodies of their prey. Though they specialize in squids, frilled sharks are known to eat a variety of fishes and sometimes even other sharks. These sharks are only very rarely encountered in the sea, so not much is known about their ecology. However, the limited misinformation that scientists do have is based on dissection and observation of individuals that were captured in deep sea net fisheries. The frilled sharks reproduce via internal fertilization and give live birth. However, they do not connect to their young through a placenta as most mammals do. Instead, embryos live off of energy obtained from yolk sacs, and once these juveniles are able to survive on their own, the mother gives birth to her young. The frilled shark's distribution seems to be global, however, its populations are incredibly dispersed, with no apparent locations of significant populations. And the Rockall Trough to the west of Ireland are the only areas with frilled shark populations in the British Isles, where the frilled shark is most frequently observed. Number 6. Sheep's Head If you're a sucker for fish with cool names, you'll definitely love the sheep's head fish. These marine creatures get their unusual name from their appearance being that they look like fish with sheep heads. 
The sheep's head fish is a marine fish found in shallow waters along the coastlines of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Their location is namely around North and South America. They are also known as silver bass, gray bass, and lavender bass. However, the most distinctive characteristic of the sheep's head is its human-like teeth. Many unsuspecting people are surprised to see the inside of a sheep's head mouth for the first time. Instead of small, pointy teeth, you'll find a set of molars and incisors-like teeth that remind you of your own set of chops. Thanks to the unique teeth of the sheep's head fish, it happily feeds on a variety of different foods. The sheep's head fish is an omnivore, meaning that it eats other animals as well as plants. It feeds on shellfish, octopuses, and a wide variety of fish. It also eats seaweed, algae, and other marine plants. The larger sheep's head can feast on crabs, words, fish, and a different variety of crustaceans. Not much is off the table when it comes to the diet of a sheep's head. You can also identify them for their large heads and mouths, as well as their camouflage coloring. With a sloping profile, the sheep's head boasts a short snout with serrated scales. The caudal fins are somewhat green, while the dorsal fins are black and gray. You'll find sharp spines on the back of a sheep's head, along with black stripes, typically five to seven of them. Number 5. Otoya Otoya is the most abundant priapulid of the Cambrian Burgess Shale Formation of British Columbia. It is a stem group rheopulid worm that averaged about 80 mm in length, along with the other Cambrian priapulids Philia, Selkirkia, Luisella, and Caligon, Skolkoferca, and Lesithioscopa. The organism was originally classified into a clade termed the Archaeopriapulida, a stem group of the priapulids proper especially for the Burgess shale and their similarity to the modern genus. The Maccabeus suggests that they are in the Seti Coronaria. Maccabeus suggests that they are in the Seti Coronaria stem group and thus are true crown group priapulids. The phylogenetic analysis does not provide a great deal of resolution to the relationships between these basal worms. Otoya's thorny mouthparts were used to seize small prey and even members of its own species. The posterior end of Otoya also had small hooks which likely acted as anchors to hold itself to the ground. Fossil evidence also suggests that when needed, Otoya was cannibalistic. Number 4. Blobfish in the aquatic world, there are a lot of stunning-looking creatures like the mandarin fish, the rainbow parrotfish, and the clownfish. And if these species are the Cinderella's of the sea, there are plenty of ugly stepsisters to choose from. But none have a reputation for being quite as ugly as the infamous blobfish. Its unsightly appearance led to it being voted as the world's ugliest animal. While some find the blobfish hideous, there are those who think it's so ugly that it's cute. Either way, it's gotten a lot of attention for its appearance, so let's take a closer look at this marine creature. Remember that gelatinous type appearance we mentioned? The blobfish only looks that way above water. In its normal habitat, which is 2,000 to 4,000 feet underwater, the pressure there makes it look like any ordinary fish. But as it is brought up to the surface, caught in fishermen's trawling nets, the pressure of the water decreases and the blobfish begins to lose its shape. This isn't the type of fish fishermen are looking for, so some attempt to throw them back in as far as attempt to spare their lives. Whether that works and they can survive long enough to get back to the depths after losing so much water pressure is unknown, but it seems unlikely given that their misshapen appearance when they reach the surface. Their bodies don't really need bones because the crushing pressure of the depths gives them all the support they need and they don't need much muscle either. For survival, the blobfish basically hangs out right above the ocean floor, moving its mouth to catch its food. Its diet consists mainly of mollusks and crabs that happen to cross its path. Number 3. The Coffinfish With a nickname like Coffinfish, scientists already knew that the deep sea dwellers, sometimes called sea toads, have special fins for walking on the sea floor. But now, a new study has revealed another coffinfish adaptation, massive inflatable gill chambers that expand the animal's body with seawater, allowing them to take up more oxygen and hold their breath for up to four minutes. They are perhaps one of the strangest fishes thanks to their ability to walk with their fins on the ocean floor. Interestingly, the coffinfish developed gradually as a benthic ocean fish. Benthic fish are creatures that occur in the depths of the ocean. These exotic deep sea creatures have a brightly colored appearance they are quite colorful, possessing orange, red, and pink bodies with yellow and olive green spots. Their mouth is quite large and contains many small but quite sharp teeth. There are more than 20 species of coffinfish, actually a type of anglerfish found across the world at depths of up to 8200 feet. 
In addition to saving energy, the study suggests that the coffinfish expansion could be a defense against predators similar to pufferfish. Number 2. The Red-Lipped Batfish There are lists of facts about the red-lipped batfish, but none would be complete without talking about their iconic mouth, which is one of their most prominent features. Several studies have been put together to try to understand why these creatures sport this red spout. However, some studies believe that it helps them find a mate, which might make sense considering the extent some species go to when finding love. Although, you won't find the red-lipped batfish surfing the waves. So if you want to get a closer look at them, you'll need to put on your scuba diving gear to meet one. The red-lipped batfish is most commonly found at depths ranging from 3 to almost 80 meters deep. However, they can be found in waters as deep as 120 meters. That's comparable to putting the Great Pyramid of Giza completely underwater. But despite living at such impressive depths, the red-lipped batfish isn't actually a good swimmer. In fact, if you were to see one of the ocean floors, you'd notice that they barely swim at all. Instead, the red-lipped batfish depicts a strange behavior where they walk along the ocean floor. This is kind of similar to the hippopotamus, which doesn't actually swim but instead runs along the bottom of the river. And the red-lipped batfish is able to do this thanks to their modified fins which act like a type of leg. Number 1. Gulper Eel Finally, we're down to the last bizarre looking creatures in the deep sea and maybe most bizarre thing that you might see today on the internet. The gulper eel might look like your run of the mill eel. This gulper eel, which is scientifically identified as Europharynx palis canoides, has its most notable attribute as the large mouth. This huge mouth is also much larger than the eel's body. In addition to that, the mouth is loosely hinged and can be opened wide enough to swallow an animal much larger than itself. The victim is then deposited into a pouch-like lower jaw, which resembles that of a pelican. This brings us to the fact that this eel is sometimes referred to as the pelican eel. Another popular nickname is the umbrella mouth gulper. Another fun fact is that the gulper's stomach can also stretch to accommodate its large meals. It moves through the water by undulating its long, slender body back and forth. They belong to the Anguilliformes order, which includes 800 species of real eels, including moray and garden eels, in addition to other true eels. The biggest eel species is the European conger, which can grow to a length of about 20 feet. They are black in appearance and only reach lengths of approximately 2 to 3 feet, which isn't very long compared to other eel species that may be found between 1,600 and approximately 10,000 feet beneath the surface of the ocean where they reside. However, these special eels don't need flashy colors or impressive sizes to stand out in the eel crowd. As seen from our descriptions, these gulper eels tend to have a trick or two up their sleeves, I mean fins, that makes them unlike any other eel species. And that concludes today's video. Which one of them did you find most terrifying? Let us know in the comment section. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.